Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. The top stories we're tracking for you. Didn't say anything anti-India, says Congress leader Rahul Gandhi amid parliament row. Pakistan court postpones police operation to arrest ex-PM Imran Khan. And Sri Lanka's public workers strike to press for lower taxes, power bills. And now for all the details, amid the ongoing tussle between the centre government and the opposition over Rahul Gandhi's remarks in London on India's democracy, the Congress leader said he did not say anything anti-India. This came after Law Minister Kiran Rijiju said what Rahul Gandhi says is the same language used by those who are anti-India both in the country and outside. The parliament on Thursday continued to witness disruptions for a fourth day as the ruling BJP lawmakers demanded an apology from Rahul Gandhi over the remarks in which he said the democracy was under attack in India. The opposition, on the other hand, held protests to demand a parliamentary probe in the Adani issue, blaming the government of favouring the Adani group amid charges of stock manipulation. Rahul Gandhi said he will respond to the controversy over his remarks inside the parliament if he's allowed. I told him that people from the BJP have made allegations against me and as a member of parliament it is my right, uh, it is my right to speak. He was non-committal. Uh, in, his, in his way he smiled. Uh, but I'm hopeful that I will be allowed to speak tomorrow. The deputy leader of the Norwegian Nobel Committee, Asli Toje, said on Thursday that India is destined to be a super power, adding that Prime Minister Narendra Modi is the most trusted leader for stopping the Russia-Ukraine war and only he can establish peace. Toji, who is in India, appreciated the country's efforts during the recent G20 foreign ministers meet to remind Russia against using nuclear weapons and PM Modi telling Russian President Vladimir Putin that this is not the era of war. He said the world needs more such interventions in international politics. Uh, Prime Minister Modi's statement was more an expression of hope uh, than of reality because unfortunately two great powers, Russia and the United States, are very close uh, to coming to blows. And I think the signal from India is this is not the way we re should resolve disputes in the world today. And I think that he has the vast majority of the world's population behind him in this statement. The Lahore High Court on Thursday ordered police to postpone an operation to arrest Imran Khan till Friday, diffusing a surge in violence that saw supporters of Pakistan's former Prime Minister fighting pitched battles with security forces. The court ordered attempt to arrest Khan, which began on Tuesday, had triggered clashes between his supporters and security forces near Khan's Zaman Park residence. Protesters had torched police vehicles and a water cannon truck and hurled patrol bombs at security forces firing tear gas and rubber bullets. The clash subsided after the High Court halted the police operation on Wednesday afternoon. A lower court in Islamabad had issued a warrant against Khan for defying orders to present himself in court over charges that he unlawfully sold state gifts given to him by foreign dignitaries during his tenure as Prime Minister. Khan, however, denies the charges. A day after Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif hinted about additional burden on masses to meet IMF conditions for a loan, the government has raised the price of petrol to Rs 272 per litre, adding pressure on the inflation-hit population. The finance division in a statement said the price hike is due to depreciation of the Pakistani rupee against the US dollar. The government has also increased the price of high-speed diesel by 13 rupees per litre. Ahead of the holy month of Ramadan, the petrol price hike is expected to further push the inflation, which is at an all-time high since the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. 
Activists staged a demonstration in front of the UN building in Geneva this week to highlight gross human rights violations by Pakistani security forces in Balochistan. They submitted petitions to the world body urging it to intervene to stop the atrocities. A delegation of the Baloch Human Rights Council staged a demonstration in front of the UNHRC building in Geneva this week and submitted petitions urging the world body to intervene and stop human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan. The demonstrators, joined by Kashmiri and Sindhi activists, highlighted extrajudicial killings, mass enforced disappearances and inhumane torture of indigenous Baloch people and other minorities in the region. So no one is safe in, uh, in Balochistan because of the Pakistani armies and Pakistan armies uh, operations and their intelligence agencies activities. So we as a human rights defenders uh, we are going everywhere and highlighted, uh, highlighting these all issues and we want and also in POJK. So the fundamental purpose of this protest was to inform United Nations Human Rights Council world community about uh, systematic abuse of human rights and uh, state forces impunity and uh, the uh, flaws in the legal system that uh, only protect the state agencies. Activists blame the atrocities have increased many fold in the wake of China Pakistan economic corridor as Pakistani forces operate with impunity in the region to ensure safe passage to Beijing. They accuse both Islamabad and Beijing have been unfairly exploiting Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources under the garb of CPEC. And amid growing unrest over the worst financial crisis, public employees at Sri Lanka's ports, hospitals, schools and railways went on strike on Wednesday to protest against high cost of living and what they called the government's draconian policies to further marginalize the poor. Thousands of members belonging to more than 40 trade unions refused to report to work or took sick leave in the latest round of protests to demand the government rolls back high taxes, lower record high interest rates and reduce power tariffs. Schools were shut down as most teachers stayed home, prompting the government to postpone the exams. Post offices and state-run banks were also closed while patients were turned away from government-run hospitals, though emergency care services were still operating. <laughs> The government has defended the tax and power tariff increases as essential to put public finances on track to unlock a $2.9 billion IMF bailout and turn around the economy grappling with high inflation, a falling currency and a severe recession. Well, after living together for several years, 97 tribal couples exchanged marital vows at a mass wedding in India's Gujarat state on Wednesday. Some of the couples were even over 50 years of age who tied the knot at the ceremony along with their children. Around 97 couples belonging to tribal communities tied the nuptial knot in a mass wedding ceremony organized in Valsad district of India's western Gujarat state on Wednesday. Mass weddings are very popular, especially among the economically backward sections of the Indian society, as these reduce the worries of financial implications. Many of the newlyweds were seen posing for photographs with their children who were conceived before the wedding when they were living together after getting engaged with permission from the community. <laughs> और ये चांदला करके ये लोग सगायो चांदला करके ये लोग साथ में रह सकते हैं और ये ये लोग परिवार भी ये लोग का होता है family members and relatives of the brides and grooms smeared the couples with turmeric paste as part of the ritualistic traditions some of the couples were even over 50 years of age as their children conducted the rituals among the many quaint customs the broad minded tribal communities in india follow from age old times well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.